Hi, boys and girls. We are starting a brand new knowledge domain at Domain 7, the history of the earth. Our first lesson, lesson one, is called Our Earth. Earth is where we live. Let's get ready to learn some more about it. First off, we always start with the words that we need to know, and let's begin. Equator. Equator is the imaginary line around the middle of the Earth that divides it into two equal halves. An example of this is Isabel is from Ecuador, which is a country in South America near the equator. The next word we need to listen for is geologist. That's a scientist who studies rocks and what's inside the Earth. An example of this is a geologist spoke to the class about her studies in Hawaii. Our next word is geology, the study of the earth. An example of this is, in his spare time, he reads books to learn more about geology. Our next word is pressure, the continuous force of weight created when something presses or pushes against something else. An example of this is, the nutcracker helped the girl create enough pressure to crack the walnut open. Our next word to listen for is surface, the outside or top layer of something. An example of this is, she wiped the surface of the table with a wet cloth after dinner. Boys and girls, this is a where are we chart. And we will be using this throughout our domain on the history of the Earth. We have started learning about our solar system in our last knowledge domain. And the planet we live on, we know that that's planet Earth. The continent we live on is North America. The country we live on is the United States of America. The state that we live in, boys and girls, is Pennsylvania. Our city is Erie, and then there's us, you, boys and girls. Today, we are going to meet an interesting scientist who knows a lot about the Earth. Listen carefully so that you can learn more about the Earth, too. Hello, kids. My name is Jerry, and I'm a geologist. Let's call him Jerry the Geologist. Did you hear those sounds in Jerry and Geologist? They both start with the same sound. That's called alliteration. Let's continue our story. A geologist is a type of scientist. A scientist studies and learns all about the world in which we live. Geologists are scientists who study rocks and what's inside the earth. That's right, rocks from pebbles to stones to boulders, from a grain of sand to the highest mountain. Rocks are everywhere. And I want you to know all about rocks, from how they are created to how they are used in people's everyday lives. People used rocks to make the jewels on this crown. People used rocks to make buildings, walls, and streets. A sculptor carved a big rock to make this sculpture of Abraham Lincoln. Geologists use rocks to learn about the earth. In the ancient Greek language, the word geo means earth and ology means the study of. When we combine these word parts, we have geology or just geology which is the study of the earth. Since the earth is mostly made of rock, we geologists spend most of our time studying rocks. Many of the rocks we see on the surface of the earth, from mountains down to pebbles, are created by incredible forces at work deep inside the earth. The surface of the earth is the outside or top layer of the earth, we walk and live on the surface of the earth. Have you ever wondered about what's inside the earth 
or under the surface where we walk and live? Thus, geologists study not only rocks, but also the forces at work inside the earth and on the earth's surface. We study the whole earth. Some scientists believe the history of the earth begins a little over four and a half billion years ago. That's a long time ago. This is my number, four and a half billion. A very, very long time ago. Before that, some scientists believe the materials that now make up earth were orbiting or floating around our newly formed sun as billions of little bits and pieces. Over many, many years, it is believed by some scientists that these floating bits and pieces gradually stuck together until they made up Earth, as well as its neighbor, the moon and the other planets. When it was newly formed, Earth was basically one big ball of hot, melted rocks. Over time, however, some of these materials cooled and hardened, allowing the planet Earth to become what it is today. Maybe you already know that Earth is a planet. Earth is one of the eight major planets that orbits the sun. Do you know the names of the other planets? I do. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Like the other planets in the solar system, Earth is trapped in the gravitational pull of the sun. This causes Earth to orbit or revolve around the sun. It takes one year, about 365 days, for Earth to complete an orbit around the Sun. The Earth's orbit around the Sun is not the only way the Earth moves in space, however. This map shows the Earth's North and South Poles. The North and South Poles are imaginary points at the northernmost and southernmost parts of the Earth. The axis of rotation is like an imaginary line or stick going right through the Earth at the North and South Poles. There is not really a stick running through the Earth around which it turns. The axis is an imaginary line around which Earth rotates. The Earth rotates or spins in the same way that a globe spins on its axis. It takes one day or 24 hours for Earth to make a complete rotation. The map also shows the equator, an imaginary line around the middle of the Earth. The equator divides the Earth into two equal halves. The area along the equator receives the most direct sunlight and is therefore generally the warmest area on the surface of the Earth. Earth is sphere-shaped, like a ball, and it is surrounded by a thick blanket of air called an atmosphere, where clouds float around. Most of the Earth's surface is covered with water in the form of five oceans. Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and Southern, or Antarctic. And between these oceans, there is land in the form of seven continents. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. People haven't always known that the Earth is round or that it rotates on its axis, as well as orbits the sun. They haven't always known that there are five oceans and seven continents or that most of the surface is covered in water. It takes hundreds of years for scientists and explorers to develop all the knowledge about the Earth that I just described in the last few minutes. But this barely begins to scratch the surface of what we now know about the history of Earth. There are three important words you need to keep in mind whenever you are thinking about geology which is the study of Earth. Heat is the first. You can feel heat from a flame or from the sun on a sunny day. 
Heat causes many changes to the earth. The second word is pressure. Like the force you use when you push on something, pressure or the force of weight also causes many changes to the earth. Time is the third important geology word to remember. To understand geology, you need to think about time in a whole new way. Forget about minutes, hours, and days. These amounts of time don't mean much in geology. Geologists think in terms of many, many years. It takes a long time for pressure and heat to do what they do. The Grand Canyon located in Arizona provides a lot of clues about the Earth's formation and history. It took millions of years for the rushing water in the river to carve through the rocks to make this canyon. No other place on Earth allows me, Jerry the geologist, to see and study so many different layers of rocks at the same time. The rock on the upper rim of the Grand Canyon is estimated by some scientists to be about 230 million years old, whereas the rock layers at the very bottom of the canyon are estimated to have formed over 2 billion years ago. That rock is half as old as the Earth is believed to be itself. Remember, heat, pressure, and time are the main factors of geology. If you understand those three words, then you are ready to move ahead and learn many things about the history of Earth. Boys and girls, I am so excited to hear more about the history of Earth. I cannot wait to see you back here the next time. Enjoy the activities today and have a wonderful time learning.